Hey guys, Keith here. Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for dropping in on the first episode of Keto's Corner. Uh, as you're aware, we've got two podcasts on the go. We have the K or H Experience, which is a podcast aimed at giving individuals a platform to delve into discussions on their careers, giving them an additional platform to promote their workings. Uh, Keto's Corner is a different beast altogether. It will be talking about all things we love, hobbies, sports, gaming, music, movie, etc. You you know about it, we talk about it. It's mostly lighthearted discussions, talking shit and shooting the breeze. Uh, but in this case, the first episode I really wanted to get out there. It's very hard to get the other podcasts up and running given COVID restrictions. It's been something we've had in the works for a while. So... For the first episode, we're going to be using a snippet from a couple of weeks ago from my Twitch stream. And a few weeks ago, I got emotional on stream talking about the car crash in 2015 and how it took everything from me. The physical and mental torment I had to endure and overcome during my recovery process. So just one disclaimer before getting into it. I do start the episode saying that, you know, bear with me if I do get emotional. Now, come about... Halfway through, I do get quite emotional. Um, I thought it'd be beneficial, given it's Mental Health Awareness Month, that, you know, look, some these things can take their bearing on some individuals, and it's better to talk about it and get it out there, because bottling stuff up isn't the way to deal with it. Go talk to someone. It'll do you the world of good. For the next 40 minutes or so, it's going to be the clip from that stream and I've edited it down to just focus on specifically that detail. So once again, thanks a million for dropping by. It means the world. Hopefully you'll be coming back after the end of this. Hopefully you find it interesting. And by the end, what I want you to do is I want you to hit me up on my socials. I want you to get in contact and let me know what topics you want us to cover specifically if you want to be on the show and moving forward what you'd like to listen to so with that being said we're going to fire away with the episode people are like i oh, keep what are you going to talk about on the podcast and I'm like well there's a couple of things i want to do live match reactions to the football with the boys have a couple of drinks have have the shits and giggles get them together look if i get emotional at any stage talking about this shit it's because it's it's not an area that I like revisiting mentally. Um, not not many people are going to understand because you haven't been in or experienced what I'm going to talk about. So I can understand if you're a bit alienated from it. Yeah, so I'll be talking about the car crash. Um, I'm going to talk about the years of hurt that I still continue to uh, have to put up with. That's one of the reasons why I haven't streamed in like ten days. Let's get into it, right? I'm going. I'm going to give you a whole breakdown of like how we got up to that point. So, 2015, right? Talk about this. 2015. I'm not going to name names. If you know them, you know them. If you don't, you're better off. 2015, August 5th. August 5th. For some reason, we were heading down late in the evening. God knows, is myself the driver, another passenger, and I was in the back passenger side of the car. And I've never been more afraid of being it or just worried in a car than I was that evening because even like my mother had a bad feeling about about the uh, the whole thing, like. Even before he left, she just had a, a bad vibe about it. And the driver is like bombing down Dennis, doing like one, 170 uh, on the motorway. And I'm just like, oh my god, right, get me the fuck down here and let's just get out of this car. Enjoy, enjoy our weekend, Thursday evening, going down, have three days down there, back. We're literally just outside Kilkey at Ennis and it's down down a it's down a kind of like it's a small road, right? And I'm the one that brings the attention to there's a light down the road. 
and we're probably like I don't know a couple hundred meters away and the driver was like oh what's that I was like I think that's a car so there was a car pulled in on the left hand side of the road and the car the car on the left hand side of the road was a taxi and the taxi the taxi had pulled into the left hand side of the road taking a fella home from a wedding I'll never forget right so our driver goes overtake doesn't slow down goes overtake and the car pulls out and you just hear us yelling fuck and I like throw my hands up like this bracing for the impact um, and the car stopped in the middle of the road the taxi and the taxi had stopped because there was two entrances to this fella's house there was his parents' house he was he was a teacher. He was going back to Dubai the next morning, and he was coming from a wedding. And the taxi man, your fella's house was to the left up a hill, and the other entrance was his parents' house. And we he he didn't know which one to take, so he stopped. And our driver quickly, like I give him credit, he quickly turned turned to the left, and we hit into the back of the taxi and went into a ditch. Now, when I say we went into a ditch, we literally, there's a tree here. There's a pole, a telephone pole here. And the car went right in the middle. Like we were fucking blessed. We uh, got out of the car and your taxi man's there swinging his shoulder about I was like what is this boy on about like honestly um I we were all really really sore um it just so happened that mine mine was worse than the others because I didn't have a um airbag in the back seat it was a like 05 Ford Fiesta and I didn't have a they didn't have airbags in the back seat so I thought I had like chipped my knee um cuz I could feel like something floating in my knee so that was my first reaction now I'll skip all the kind of like waiting around and this that and the other um and just talk talk about like the following kind of like days and the way that I kind of like came about so look guards arrive everything arrive blah 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 we get picked up from his parents we go to go to the place we sleep wake up the next day we're all in bits the driver's chest is completely sore he's in painkillers the whole time he shown that he had cracked his um uh, his uh, chest bone from the the impact and they were all in bits absolute bits and the boys we went out onto um we went out onto like a raft thing and i'm good on the sea and i was just nauseous as fuck out on the sea that day um and i was like what is going on here like i am like i love the sea i am great on boats like i i was like i am so bleh. get off and the boys start like jumping off the pier down in Kilkee into into uh, the water, and I'm just like I can't do that. I'm I'm going <laughs> I'm going back to the house, and you can double check the date because I I'll never forget it. I went back to the house and I watched the Liverpool Stoke game, and Coutinho scored that absolute banger of a long range goal from uh, the left hand side of the box to win it 1-0 and everyone comes back and I'm like yeah Liverpool won blah 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 
I was just like, just get me home. Um, I hadn't told my parents about uh, the crash and the driver had put up a Facebook status saying that we were in one. And one of my other friends saw this and I wasn't answering the phone call from my mother and she rang my other best friend at the time and he was like, oh yeah, they were in a crash and she texts me and I'm like, right, I better ring her. And I was like, yeah, we were in a crash and she was like, I knew it. I had a feeling. I just knew it. I was like, look, we're, we're all alive. Everyone's doing okay. Um, anyway, be home in a day or whatever. Get home and... My injuries didn't seem that bad at the time. I I, I I was dealing with it. And I don't know what... It was definitely like the impact. Like the impact. I don't know if it was like the adrenaline from the next couple of days. But I didn't feel it that bad. So like a week goes by. And I'm over at my sister's house down in Betty's town. Because she's on her holidays and I'm looking after the dog. And the first night I'm there and I wake up in the middle of the night and I am in absolute bit. Absolute bit. Uh, I can't move. I'm in agony. And uh, it goes on for like an hour or so. I just literally can't do a thing. So I ring my mom the next morning and I'm like, here, I'm in absolute bits last night. Couldn't do a, a notion. Uh, and she's like, go off and get a scan done. And this is how naive I was, right? My thought was, I don't want to get the driver in trouble. I'm like, if someone comes out being injured from this crash he's already stressed with his eyeballs he's lost his car he doesn't have the money to get a new one he he is absolutely stressed to his eyeballs and i was like i don't want to put any added pressure on him so i delay getting a scan done and time goes on i i literally stopped everything everything i had no nothing i couldn't go to the gym couldn't do anything i was staying at home just looking after myself my mom was uh mom has experience with like dealing with injuries and whatnot so she was looking after me and time elapses right and i say i i go to the gym one day and i say to one of the trainers i'm like I'm in absolute bits. I'm like, I haven't even done anything. I've done a bit of stretching. And I can't even move. Um, he's like, go get checked out. So, I go get checked out. And things end up being, a, like, I go to my GP. And he misdiagnoses me, right, with muscle tissue injuries. And I'm like, nah, there's, there's more to this. Send me to physio. So he sends me to um, the physio. The physio's like, right, we've got a lot of work to do. So just let you know, I've had about like <laughs> 40 hours of physio on different injury parts throughout like that time frame to show you the amount of work that needed to do. Because a lot of it's to do with like mental. Because when you're getting injury and you're set in a certain way, you literally have to reset your mind going, I need to push myself to do these things to get better again. So, it comes to March, right? And during this time frame, I'm still working, right? Because I'm not saying a word to anyone, right? Not even my dad. I said it to mom, I didn't say it to dad. Um, because I was working with him, I didn't want to let them down. And 
we literally get to March, right? And I go, right, I'm in bits. Absolute bits. Um, You get something else checked. So we go and get the MRI done. And I say to Dave, I go, look, I'm going to need get all these details because my cousins and everything were saying um put a claim in right but i had no idea of what like a claim was how it worked i thought i'd just get the driver into more trouble which i didn't want to do because i'm loyal to the bone i was like i'd, I'd rather if it's going to affect him in any way i'm not doing it and it comes along and I, I remember him, he came over, he gave me all the details of the claim that he had in, because he was fighting with the other driver. And I go to the solicitor that my uncle uh, had previously worked with and suggested. And Paul couldn't have been nicer. The first question, by the way, I asked was, would this affect my friend in any way? He said no. It won't. It's against an insurance company. I was like, grand. Fair enough. Because I put in the claim, the driver gets a letter in the post saying that Keats put in a claim. Straight away texts me and he's like, what's this? I was like, you knew. Like I told, like you came over to my house and I told you everything and I said, it's not going to affect you. And it was the first thing that I said to the solicitor and he he was like go back go back to the solicitor and make sure and i was like are you actually for real so just to ease his mind i went to the solicitor and i asked paul again i was like look the driver driver doesn't really believe that it's not going to affect him and he was like it's nothing to do with him it's not going to affect his insurance it's not going to affect his family in any financial way it's literally against the insurance company now the interesting thing about this claim is that both drivers were insured by the same company so in this case there was an internal battle within that insurance company as to who was at fault they keep on having meetings and then the insurance company they're like half and half at these meetings saying that my driver's at fault or taxi driver's at fault it's going to go to court the fella asked me to vote for him which of course i would but in the build-up to all this in his claim i was asked to write out a report of the incident as which i've stated in this and when we went to his solicitors, they then asked me to change my statement, right? So we changed my statement from saying, because supposedly when you say ditch, it looks worse on our side. So I changed it in my writing, by the way. They're, they're issuing me these words and I making me change this statement to better off the driver right so do that because once again i'm a loyal friend and I, I didn't want him being any worse off do that things come past it's now the company finished up in the end of october 2016 so I continued to work the whole time and went back to college. I was like, right, it'll give me a few months to focus on therapy, recovery, all sorts. Grand. Go back to college. They've just finished up work. And I'm like, right, I'll stay, I'll stay out of work a couple of months. I'll focus on my recovery, all sorts. And come may i get asked to um there's a new new attraction going in at like my current workplace and they were like here uh we'll it's it's real easy work 
it's it's only the weekends be grand you just sit down 90 percent of the time right so i was like grand happy days do that not not too strenuous on the body um not even a month goes by and i get promoted to uh the operations manager because obviously the owner could see the way that i was communicating with him that about how everything was going that I, my skill set be used better October 2017 right um the driver rings me he's like yeah it's going to court blah 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 will you testify for me I was like yeah of course I will um <sighs> yes um but the week of it gets cancelled right they, they, they come to a settlement or whatever i don't know how much he got i don't know how much the other fellow got all i know is that uh my driver said that the other fellow didn't get anywhere near as much as he wanted to get um may that year i went in and checked the mri right because my fucking gp wouldn't just listen to me of all the shit that I was going through. I was literally. I was staying up. I'm not staying up. I, I couldn't even get to sleep. Like I've been lying in the bed. I literally had no social life. I couldn't do a stitch. I was literally. I've got pictures of me on the couch. With my dog. R.I.P. Fifi. Um, because that was literally my evenings. It was literally go, go to college. And come back. And recover literally feet up take all the pressure off my lower back so the injuries so saying from that car crash were not only a uh, multiple like tear of muscles in my back uh, i also had two herniated discs i had sciatica down my left leg which prevented me from driving for two years and i wasn't going to do automatic like fuck that um <laughs> like oh, I actually just hate talking about this stuff so much it really does um, it's really hard for me to talk about <sighs> so all the time I'm putting on this big facade of like nothing's going on uh, with me and because I didn't want I didn't want people Didn't want people fucking, I didn't want people to look at me any different. I didn't want them to be like, oh, look, he's not, uh, I just, I can't even explain it. It's just, it's cat. It's, it's really cat when you, when you think like that. Um, but I did, I didn't want any sympathy in the slightest and I didn't complain in the slightest at, at the time as well because the amount of shit, the amount of pain that I was going through on a daily basis, I uh, kept to myself. And the reason I kept it to myself is I had an uncle, uh, RIP David, um, that for his entire time that I knew him, he was wheelchair bound and he was always always so positive always the life of the party um and he was in pain every single day so he was my inspiration to basically keep everything quiet so yeah as i said dislocated hip sciatica down my left leg which was on a daily basis stopping me from driving and and two herniated discs and the muscle tears which i'm still dealing with couldn't do a stitch everyone's like keith's just being really anti-social what's this about and i was like you don't understand the worry that goes through uh someone's mind when you're going through all that shit uh I had a conversation with my sister once. Fuck. And, uh... 
Man, I was so worried. So worried, eh? <laughs> Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Woo! I told you. I told you don't. <laughs> I'd get emotional about this shit. Eh. I'm so glad that's not on the green screen cam. <laughs> oh. Oh, compose yourself. I was so worried that my life was going to be not being able to work and living off benefits and being homeless. It was such a stressful time. Honest to God. And I was like, what should I do? So that's, she gave me the talk about going back to college and getting that kind of safety net under me. Because when you're in it, when you're in that moment, and you're in so much pain, and there's so much uncertainty, because every single time, Every single time you think that, right, okay, you're getting better. And then you have another setback and another one. And I was literally like, fuck me, man. Oh, I fucking... I hate talking about this shit. I really do. I really do. If you can't tell by, by the emotion. So, yeah. That was really fucking shit times, man. Really fucking shit times. Um, so as I said, went back to college, got into the got into the job. It was like right, at least I'll have some income coming in, uh, to facilitate going to college and everything. Uh, so where are we? Twenty seventeen. Yeah, so you, you, you don't even understand, right? You're talking about an individual that is six one, right? That, like, oh, I, like, like, the timing of that crash really going to be worse for me. I was on the college rugby team. Uh, I had trained all summer to get into my best shape ever. To play eight for the rugby team. And literally just taken away. Played one game in net. Uh, with my mates for their team at the time. And literally that week. I was like right I'll sign up. I'll play with you boys. They fucking. We ended up losing like 7-1. But I had a great game. Even though I can see it in seven goals. Yeah. Literally everything just fucking taken away like the first person that I told after a good while was my best friend Sean. Uh he was working in a uh shop in town at the time and I uh Sent him a text saying, here, I'm coming back from college. Can we go for lunch? And uh, I told him. <laughs> he was the first person that I told outside my family. Like, my brother didn't even know about this shit until dad's birthday the other week. Uh, he was like, I didn't even know. And I was like, sure, how do you think? Like, I had to stay away from 
my nieces and nephews for like three or four years because I wasn't able to pick them up or play with them like and I told that to tell him so I don't know how he he didn't tell him like uh so <laughs> talking about that football team like literally I was going to play with that team that year and what did they do what did they do they go and win the fucking league. They go and win the fucking league. And I'm like, are you actually for real, man? I miss out on winning the league. With my best mates. You so much stuff taken away. Like, uh, <laughs> Congratulations on them having that in their locker, though. With me talking about this shit. Because it's fucking cat. But I need to talk about it. Because it could help some other individuals. I always said I'm glad that these things happen to me. Because if it happened to someone with a weaker mindset. Uh, God knows what they'd do. God knows what they do. do. Uh, so if someone finds this as being like a bit of a shining light to them. Or whatever. Uh, then it was worth talking about. 2017 September 2017 now I'm no I'm skipping over I don't want to drag out all the fucking pain and shit that came along with the injuries and the lack of social life and everything um I'm just going to talk about a timeline of this 2017 September I started working in Western Motors as part of my work placement I was originally supposed to go into Coke's marketing department and they got shipped off to uh, their department got taken out of town because they were moving over to the Asian market to be closer to uh, resources. I started on the 4th of September and I was in the accounting office with all the girls and come December they're like doing a whole different change around of the office like like book cases everything folders you've got a woman there that's coming up to retirement and they're like keep can you do this and i told them like i had to leave so many times early um no not so many times i make that sound bad i had to leave a lot for doctor appointments scans everything and i'll always appreciate SJ for allowing me that time without question uh, but you've got a woman there now as I say I'm 6'1 I've literally like a fucking beast built like a beast can't do shit can't do a fucking stitch so you've got a woman 64 ready to go retirement lifting things and you're there, 20, 20, what, 25 or something, and you're not even able to, like, give them a hand. Like, you tell me something that's, like, more, like, humiliating than that. When you've got three girls doing stuff, and you're there, not able to... It's fucking cat, man. It's fucking cat. I fucking hate that memory, like... As I stated, those injuries... um. The the worst injury and the one that I continue to have issues with is a, a facet joint on my left hand side and uh, it arose or really came to fruition when I was doing my exams. Now, <laughs> this is what you got to understand as well. You're talking about a person that has to study for their degree at the same time as trying to, like, it, it was fucking shit. If you, you think about anyone that has to, like, do anything, you think of someone that's in a lot of pain and they've still got to study for exams. This, this last injury with my facet joints literally just popped up out of nowhere during the exam um 
like it's just it, it's so weird the way that the body works and um, and that's been my most long lasting one which i still have to get injections in which is why i've got the, the letter here let me hold this up which is what i was like doing last week if it focuses in right don't want to give my address away so there's the bowman hospital um appointment for my injections into my spine to allow me to function as a normal person fun times man fun times so that's what i was doing last week i worked nine to five with western motors and then i was still working with fantasia group so from five o'clock i would then drive half an hour 20 minutes by traffic half an hour over to Fantasia and work from half five till 11 or 12 o'clock at night there home sleep repeat I was working 70 hour weeks at that time like it's like, oh, it's just mad um so yeah, as I said, I was working 70 hour weeks while still trying to do a uh, college work. SJ would allow me if there wasn't enough uh, things to be doing for them to uh, let me get through my college work from like two o'clock on a Friday. Finish college, right? Finish college, come out, work full time with the company that I'm still working with because I was trying to get a house. Because as you heard me mutter through me tears there that one of the things I was really really worried about was going homeless um so in ireland the way that you need to do you need six months consistent bank statements right uh showing and i had everything grand and uh everything grand I was like, grand, I won't I won't change job, I'll get this all set up hunky dory. Uh get a house. That was my number one priority was get a house. So that was November. And then December comes along, right? And I've got my court date for my claim. Right? <laughs> As you see, I'm quite the emotional guy and literally we get there and my solicitor's with the other fella and they're like look the court system in Ireland's arse is basically what I'm telling you right now court system in Ireland is arse because it's not done on the basis of facts it's done on the basis of your potential your potential judge and whatever mood they're in on that day in regard to that and the insurance company's claim it's it, it's it boggles my mind right it, it really does bog their defense was that i could have picked up these injuries in a time frame in like the the weeks after the crash like you for real and because i was loyal to my friend um I fucked myself I fucked myself uh I should have went straight and looked after me like scans and everything straight away so if you're ever in an incident just go get your scans straight away don't even think about anyone else because they don't think about you right they do not give a toss about you so basically, I got sweet fuck all from my claim compared to what if the way that they do it over here is they've got a book of quantum and they go, right, that's your main injury there. Here's all your special damages, blah, blah, blah. Um, add it up. And if you lose the case, which pfft, if you lose the case, you've got to pay for our, all their all their 
solicitor fees and everything like that. So they were like, right, here, this is the best that we're going to do. They're meeting us about halfway, right, between this point and this point. I think it's going to be the best offer. It could depend on what judge you get. So my dad was with me and he was like, Keith, I know, I know you should have gotten this, right? But you should go, go and take this, right? So I, the boys went away. I sat there, had a chat with my dad. Once again, had a tear coming down because I knew all the shit that I had been through to get just this. Because you got to remember, right? You've only got one life. You've got one life. And it goes back to what I say at the start. Like, my biggest fear is death, right? And I, I, like, just the thought of... Just the thought of... Death. Like, just pure darkness for the rest of life. And I've literally had four years taken away completely out of my hands right it, it's so shit like and the worst thing is right i i emailed um rtd looking after um kind of like road laws and all those bits and bobs and i was like right i've got this plan in place i was like because the driver the driver of the car I was in the crash in didn't change his driving habits at all so I was like right there's insurance companies like Boximo that monitor your driving and I was like put these in to cars of drivers that are involved in crashes and that way you can determine what way you fluctuate their price of their insurance after a crash depending on their driving habits so i emailed this didn't get a response and then a couple of months later i see that the same td is bringing out a notion of just bigger fines and i mean i was so pissed off so pissed off so i sent a rocket of an email to them and once again b-roll will be provided about this um got a response from their office saying that they don't deal with this you've got to deal with guards to get changes in law we've got another mate who once again these this lad was going down to kill key and i said to our other mate i go i'm warning you that driving is going to be about 170 blah 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 enjoy your weekend i'll ask you what it's like when you come back well comes back and I go hello there was I right yeah you're right I was like are you actually for real how can you be involved in a crash right and cause fucking damage to someone alter their complete life and still be like exact same habits so we <sighs> I tried, I tried so hard not to be better towards the fella. I, I, I really did, and, and the family. Because any time I'd see them afterwards, um, they'd be like, Ah, oh, Keith, how, how are you getting on? And I was like, yeah, trying to deal with this. And they would just pass it off. Pass it off. They didn't want to know. Because it looked bad on them. And it was pure shit. Pure shit. You're talking about someone I'm friends with for literally my whole life and our family acts like that as once again my best mate Killian says he goes imagine that was me driving right and could you imagine my mother she would be checking up on you the whole time I was like yeah they're not like that they don't want to know they'll just continue do, doing their own thing so they don't care about us. Uh, there's a lot of resentment there from my family side towards their actions. Uh, they'd be preaching in church about... They'd be reading out Bible verses and saying things about forgiveness and looking after people and whatnot. And at the same time, they don't, don't do what you preach. So, it's shit. It's really shit. Because all I want is a uh, look how are you getting on 
not even a sorry. They don't even acknowledge their part in the the accident. Like, it's it's fucking shit. Because if that was me, if that was me, I'd be checking in every now and again, going, "How's your recovery going? Right? Are you making strides for that?" I would have so much guilt on me. And, like, I knew, I knew, right, because the boy was away for a while, right? He was away for a while. He had to come back. And they had a whole talking about heartbreak, right? Came back in December. And they had a big surprise welcome back for him. <laughs> Everyone was there, except from little old Keith, who didn't get an invite. And it hasn't been a word to since. Um... And that broke my heart. That actually... Because I, I'm loyal. I'm so loyal to my friends. Because I love them so much. Um, and it's... it's <sighs> Loyal to a fault, really. Um, and that broke my heart. It really did. And even recently, they had someone pass in their family. And I, my first reaction is to... Console and, you know, be there for them. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not giving you the time of day when you don't care about me or how I'm getting on. And that's a life lesson for you. It doesn't matter how long you've been friends with someone. If they're going to treat you poorly, fucking don't put up with that shit. Do not put up with that shit. Move on. There's people that want to be in your life. There's people that want to see you do well and everything. stick with them it doesn't matter like your friendship isn't based on like the amount of time you know someone it's by the the amount they'll they're there for you and they weren't there a step of my recovery and still recovering as i showed i'm still getting injections into my spine to help with the the pain before i put the claim in that um there was a possibility it wasn't gonna work out in my favor because i um, because I waited, I waited to see, I, cause I didn't want the driver to get in more trouble. Um, I waited to see, I didn't want to get him in any trouble because he was my best friend. And the way my mother said it to me was like, don't think of it as you didn't get this amount of money. Think that you paid this amount of money to see the real them. And that's the way I got a look at it. So yeah, that, that was that. That was December. And then literally, as I said, two heartbreaks. The second heartbreak was... um second heartbreak was not getting the house in March. The, the fella, one of my friends, once again, I'm not going to out. Um, I asked for him because my, my plan was to buy the house with one of my parents as a guarantor but because of their age the banks wouldn't allow it so uh, I asked one of my friends who I thought it'd be the best deal for him uh, and I tried really making I, I made every deal to try and like suit him the best because I thought it would have worked out best for him being on the contract and everything and he couldn't go through with it at the time, which I fully respect. I understand where it was coming from, but that fucking broke my heart as well. Like, as you heard about me fear about going homeless at the start, like literally, literally it was a fucking heartbreak. And then COVID hits and because my whole plan with the gaff was that we'd buy the house, right? Buy the house. Me and me mates would live in the house. And it would all be affordable. Because I could... This is the way I was looking at it, right? Now, talk about Keith being a fucking genius. Keith fucking knew what he was on about here. Want to buy the house. What would be the equivalent of... If anyone lost their jobs... If anyone lost their jobs... And they had to go on the social... That the rent would be... One week out of your four weeks payments. 
that's what your rent would be you'd be covered you'd still have enough money for expenses and having a life this way by the way i didn't ask i literally saved up the whole amount of money never mind what the claim was i saved up the whole deposit for the house before the claim right so don't even get thinking that key could afford the, the fucking house before the claim right i had that deposit done before and you can see my bank statements right And I was like, right, well, I'll have this security. I had to go into the social with one of my friends, uh, Dave, because he was starting up a, a company and there was some grant you could get from the social of like two grand. So we went in. And while we were there, there was a woman at one of the kiosks. And she was there going on, I didn't get my job secrets this week. And your one's like, you've run out of your credits. And your one's like, I'm already behind on my mortgage payments. I need the money. And your one was like, look, there's a process. You've got to sign up. You'll get confirmation in a week. And then you'll get payment in a couple of weeks. And she was like, I'm behind on my mortgage. I need this. And that's that's exactly what I was trying to stay away with. What I was trying to help everyone out with was literally get the house. And then we'd all be covered. And then COVID hits. And people are losing jobs. And people aren't able to afford things. And I was like. Call me an economist. Like. I didn't think it would happen. Now I didn't think it would happen. As quick as it has with COVID. But. I could see the writing on the wall. With the economy in the first place. Never mind. COVID hitting. So that was my second heartbreak. In like literally. Fucking five months was that gaff right so yeah that's that's life i know that's not a, that hasn't been a fun um hour or so or conversation but that's life and sometimes you just need someone to say why things are that's probably one, one of my faults is like i'm so brutally honest with people as well people always think uh, I'll say I'll say what they want to hear, and that gets you nowhere. Say what. Say what'll benefit them the most, right? The truth. Say say it the way it is. Like, there's no point to pussyfooting around, telling people, yeah, you're doing great when you're not doing great. Like, it really doesn't work like that. And people respect you more for being honest the whole time. As soon as you say something that's not honest, you lose all your credibility. And if you don't have your word, what do you have? Like, that's what my dad taught me. He literally, he was like, regarding anything else, he was like, I won't go back on my word. Um, A topic that I didn't get into uh, with that whole, like, car crash and everything was, like, one of the bigger bits was when I put up on my personal account, um, kind of, like, detailing my tanks to, well, letting people know that I had these injuries and given thanks to my friends for being there for me when uh, I was recovering was uh, <laughs> when I was a teen, I, I got bullied an awful lot for being overweight uh, and rightly so, I was atrociously overweight. Um, and as I said, dropping from 19 and a half stone down to like 12 stone in six months, not healthy weight, don't do it. Um, but one of the things that personally you got to deal with when you go through, unless you experience that type of like body change, um, is like the fear of putting on weight again, which was one of my big fears with the injuries was not being able to exercise. And even though I completely changed my diet to lessen the amount of calories I was taking in to for the change of lifestyle and less activity, um, like you're still naturally going to put on weight if you're not not burning off your calories so recently um i said to i said to dara if i was going to continue streaming i'd have to get back into running because i haven't been able to run in hey guys i want to say thanks a million for sticking around i know it wasn't a uh, fun episode as what we are trying to promote in the show but it's a very important topic that i thought we'd 
let people kind of know some of the stuff that I've been through over the last couple of years and if it's in any way beneficial to someone to listen to that uh, to talk to individuals about what they're going through hopefully they'll reach out and talk to their friends um, one thing that I didn't cover within the episode was that one of the biggest issues at the time was one of our other friends had put in a claim and was kind of exaggerating uh, their injuries and there was a whole stigma within our friend group about that individual and god bless him i love him to bits he's one of my best mates but because of that i had to stay quiet about my injuries because there i didn't want the group to have that same type of stigma against me even though my <laughs> my injuries were as legit as they could come it was one of the other bits that kind of kept me from talking about it so with that said i want to once again thank you for joining keto's corner for this first episode from now on it's going to be more light-hearted conversation it was just the fact that we had covered that piece in the last couple of weeks uh promoted on social medias and i thought that i'd give you all the audio from that so i hope you all have a wonderful tuesday evening We'll see you back for the next episode. Don't forget to hit me up on socials about what you want to hear. And we'll talk to you then.